Okay, so I just want to make an illustration to help you guys like really understand how to compensate and how to build like the proper team at your at your gym, right? So we're gonna look at it like this, like like you have you have somebody who's a gym owner, right? In reality, they're a shareholder. They own a share of a company. Hopefully, you guys set it up as a corporation. You're a shareholder now, and somebody's the CEO um, and the CFO, right? So, the, and there's some other executive positions we're not going to talk about, but um, and then you're going to make sure that you have somebody making sure you have com customers coming in the door. In the beginning, a lot of times that's going to be word of mouth, and we're going to we're you know, put up a website and things like that, right? But you need to have somebody who actually is gonna make make sure people are gonna come in predictably and at will, um, if you wanna have a real sustainable functioning business in the, in the long run. So um, so the sooner you get somebody that can do that, uh, the better. Um, it's just getting, getting them at the right price. So um, now, as we start building up, we start having part-time coaches, we pay them hourly, right? Hourly part-time coaches, ideally, um, you have part-time coaches that, that, that are that they're professionals in some other career. They're not necessarily, uh, you know, trying to open their own gym and become your comp your, your competitor, right? So, um, so kind of an example, you know, like like for us, we have we have people in the finance world. We have part-time coaches that are that are uh, one, uh, one works uh, is a lawyer at a hospital. So, um, so our, our part-time coaches are professionals at other stuff. Um, then. You want to have sort of a duo here, right? In the beginning, gym owners were wearing like a lot of hats, trying to trying to cover a lot of things. But it doesn't have to be that way. Like, you can literally open up a gym and make make all of these positions happen very very fast if you have the right CMO in place. Okay, so the first the, the first position, right? Or the first the, the the first position you want to outsource is operations because um, you want to make sure that we get sales coming in. Right, and so if you're if you're really lean on staff, you can you can have have part time coaches step in during the times that you do sales, and then maybe operations is taking the back seat. But as soon as you get enough uh, revenue coming in, where you can pay somebody to become a full time coach slash operations manager, that's that's going to be your best bet. So you give them a base salary. I'm sure, find a pen that works. So you're, they're going to get a base. Base salary plus bonus plus commission. Okay, and same thing over here. You have to pay yourself a base salary plus bonus plus commission. All right. Um, you don't make profit until you're paying what what you've described as your base salary plus bonus plus commission. Right. We have a base salary. We have a bonus structure that's based on tiers of revenue, right? Depending on which tier of revenue we're at, we're paying a, a, dip, a different bonus, and that goes for, for, for both positions. Um, you want to do this because you don't pay yourself any profit until, until th these things are met, right? Until the CEO is comped, and, until the, C I mean, and the CMO is paid, and the CEO is paid. Only up here do we talk about profit. And I hear way too many times people talking about profit when in reality it's not profit right so we got to like know where profit is when we're, when we're discussing profit because let's say you want to hire somebody here right and and, 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 it, and you you were calling this profit you had a partner that you were splitting it for whatever reason but now you hire somebody here now profit drops way down right you, you just can't function that way this has to be a, a, a certain amount of money going to each of these each of these, uh, each of these positions, these positions, they need to be a team. They need to be congruent. They need to be tied in together. They need to work together, right? When they're working together to solve problems, that benefits you as the shareholder. That's going to drive profit, right? So you need these guys working together to drive revenue up, to drive bonuses up, um, and they need to be incentivized, right? This person's going to obviously get more commission. Because this per person's duties are primarily to do sales. This person's gonna get less commission, obviously, so this is gonna be more of like a caretaker type of person who's gonna take care of people. This person's gonna just be getting them in the door, this person's gonna be taking care of them, right? Or this, be, th this person's gonna get them in the door, this person's gotta get them signed up, this person's gonna take care of them, 
The coaches have to take care of them. These guys all take care of, 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 our, of our members. Um, but when you build it like this, and you build it to, based on some of the other videos that I, that I, that I built out about uh, the, the sweet spot, uh, you build it to the sweet spot in the member base, these guys are working together properly. Um, you, have, you have somebody in place who's making sure customers are coming in your doors. And then, yeah, you, can, you, you obviously are operating as a CEO. So let's say you, you hire an employee to do this, you have an employee to do that. Now, and you, you, you outsource this to a, to, a, to a good firm. Now, your job is to be the CEO. To be the CEO of a gym, it does not take very much time, right? Like it really doesn't. You're talking like an hour a day between CEO and CFO stuff. It's like an hour a day plus a team meeting. We call it, you know, it's like six to seven hours a week is what it takes to be a CEO of a gym, like a micro gym, like a CrossFit, right? Six to seven hours a week. And you're getting, so you're gonna get a, comp, a certain compensation for that, but it's not gonna be big. Your profit is what you're gonna get paid. And the reason for that is, like if you ever sold the gym, right, there should be some amount of money getting paid to somebody who's the CEO, right? And, and, and you could set that up as a management company, you could set yourself up as a management company and say, hey, you know, if you sold, sold your gym, you could still be the CEO, sell the gym, and now you're working six to seven hours a week specifically to that gym, and you're making X amount of comp. So you sold the gym for the, for the value of the gym, got a big check, but then you're making uh, a little bit of money for working six to seven hours a week, right? So you have to think of like the next step of what's gonna happen when you're signing compensation to each of these positions. Um, you know, the CEO, the CMO, they're probably gonna be making roughly around the same amount of money, right? In, in terms of the, the, the income that they can make because again, CMO, it's probably somewhere in that same range, maybe a little bit less time per week, um, but that, that's, that's, that's how that's gotta be structured. Only after all of this stuff is paid, do you have profit? And so for anybody who has partners out there, everything else has to get paid before you ever talk about profit. Like, like I had an example a few months ago and, and you know, the business finally started making money. We, we came in, we started doing marketing and the business finally started making money. And I said, okay, well, so what's going on? What's the partner do? Well, the partner coaches three classes a week. This guy's in here doing all of this work, all of it himself, right? And he's not taking a paycheck. And then the partner's like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's time. I, I, we, got, we, we started making profit, so we, we can now take a paycheck. And I was like, dude, no. Like, you can't do that. Like, you gotta, you gotta, everything has to be defined as to what you're getting paid before any, before any shareholder is taking any profit. There's zero profit until all of these things are covered, right? Everything below here has to be covered before profit. Obviously, like I'm assuming like all the regular expenses, the rent and the utilities and all that stuff is all, all below here, like that's just assumed. But um, none of that, like all of that has to be paid before you ever talk about profit. So that's, that's, the, uh, that, that's, that's really the way we wanna look at, um, at, staffing, at staffing our gym. We want to staff it in a way and design positions in a way that we know that we can plug somebody in um, and th that person becomes an employee. They work together well. They, they support and drive our business. That creates predictability. We have a good CMO. That creates predictability. That puts us as the gym owner, the, the, the shareholder, in a position to be the CEO slash CFO. And if we have partners, then we deal with profit. And that's at the very end. Okay? So... Hope you enjoyed this.